Hi everybody, it is KJ from Metro Hobbies and I'm back to the table with some beautiful art in the board game Meadow. It is gorgeous, it is being published by Rebel Studio and it's been lovingly created by Clemens Kallix. So let's take a look at how he's created a Meadow in a board game. Okay, the first thing is, look at the components. They're so, so, so beautiful and that's so much about board gaming is you're really at the tactile experience and the beauty of what you're playing as you solve the puzzle to try and win. These cards, the graphic design, like the icons and also the, the little details. And I will tell you something about the cards. Not only is they lovingly created with the artwork, the board game actually comes with what's called an almanac or a card index. That card index, every single card, very small um, text tells you where you can find it in here. You don't need this to play the game. It is going to tell you what is in that picture and it is going to tell you its scientific name and then it is going to tell you what it actually is. So for all those people who are really, really curious about the, the native world and how, how, it, how it works, this is a great game, not just because it's lovely to play, but it's really good at giving you some information about what it is that you're actually looking at and why it actually works um, the way it does. So I'll give you an idea about how it plays. I'm not going to give you a full rule set. You, uh, there is a tutorial video that the creators have actually included. There's a QR code on the, on the top of the rule book. So I'll show you the rule book. There's our rule book. There's your QR code. So if you're not wanting to read the rule book, even though it is very well laid out and it is fairly easy to understand, if you've played anything like Wingspan, you'll be absolutely fine picking this kind of game up. Um, you'll be able to watch that video. And the video is really nice and straightforward, really well laid out, comfortable to listen to. So what are we looking at here? What do we have? This board tracks the rounds. Um, what I will tell you about this board is this board is specifically for two players. These little icons here tell you that it's a for two player. There are other boards for a three player, a four player, and on the back, a one player, because this game does come with a solo mode. Now that's important because that helps it scale. That allows the game to be comfortable no matter how many players that are there and that things aren't imbalanced. Um, so it's really nice to play solo. I've done that myself and it's really nice to play with a group of people and enjoy it. Now, what have we got going on in the scoring board? We have a little walker who's walking through the meadow and the, that marks each round. Now you just noticed that the little marker went across a, a little sand hourglass. That actually indicates the change of the season. So we take out our south compass of cards and we put in our north compass of cards. So that's a, a little way of tracking and I'll tell you about those cards later, but that's a little way of tracking the movement of the game. They do have little indicators, which I really, really like. So obviously that's only gonna happen. You're gonna have six rounds before the end of the game and then you do your scoring. You might've noticed that there's these little tokens here with little bird, or there's here, there's a little butterfly. Now these tokens, as you can see, are modular in the sense that you can change them. You randomly select them at the beginning of the game these are bonus tiles. These are end games to score. So what are you scoring? Let's go to the cards because that's where the art is and that's where all the scoring is. These are those icons I was talking about. You're wanting to collect them into your tableau. So that's your play area. You have to have a ground card. So this is where you're building up the ground of the meadow. Here is a leafy area. Here is a grass area. So I might want to take that card and I would need, let's see, to play something like this. As you can see, the requirements to play a butterfly, I need a grass card and I need a grub. So I can't actually play that. Oh, wait, no, I have a grub and a grass. So I could play that card here. Now let's just say my grub was over here. I could still play it on either card as long as somewhere in my tableau, I met those requirements because you'll see, notice on the cards that there's some that have, well in here you can only see that they've got two, but if you go further into the game you'll see that there are, and I'll show you a few of these beautiful cards, there are some that have three or two different icons. That requires two leaf um, grounds, so you'd actually have to have built up two leaf grounds there. There we go, there's one with three, so you have to have the shale and the leaf grounds in order to place that. And all this has got some theme with it because of the, uh, as I was saying about the picture cards. How do you actually collect the cards? How do you actually pick them up? The mechanism for running the round are these little fence posts. That's right, they're fence posts because Meadows has fences. They tell you what you can actually do. If you were to slot this token here, so it was, has to be unoccupied, it's telling that you can take the fourth card in that row. So I could pick that up and I could either keep it in my hand or I could play it. Or I could put it over here and that would mean that I could take the fourth card up the top. There is a number of different ones of these that let you do different things. So here we've got a visual spatial puzzle to work out which card that you want to collect. And you have to plan out your actions about which order you place them before you the end, the end of the round, because you'll have only these 
five in total for one round. So that one is I can choose one, that one is I can choose two, that one would be the third one from there. This one allows you anywhere. So maybe I needed this card, but I didn't have a one left anymore. So I could place that there and I could say that's a one. You also have, and you've probably noticed, little icons on the bottom here. They actually do something. They're relating, turn them up the other way, play them on the round tracker. Now that tells me I can actually buy two roads. These are our roads. You need them as currency because you have to play them in order to play a house card or a meadow card. So that would have to, in order to place a landscape meadow card, I would actually need one of these roads in order to connect it. And as you can see, I'm also gonna need other, other um, requirements as I'm gonna need some cherries because as you can see, there's cherries in that tree. So there's, I know there's a lot of icons that I'm mentioning. Don't be afraid of that. You will pick it up really easily. It's very, very intuitive. It makes sense what you would require to get the card that you're trying to get. For example, you need trees for the, the little uh, flying possum there or flying squirrel probably because it's not Australia. These other little things on the thing. So this says that I can take a card from anywhere. So maybe all these spots are located, but there's a spot here for me to take. I can use that and I can take absolutely any card I want. Uh, this one allows me to pick up three cards and keep two. This allows me to choose any of the actions that I've already shown you. Now, the other thing that this allows me to do when I place a card in here, a token in here, it means that I could potentially complete one of these. So if I have a house in my, in my little uh, tableau, which I obviously don't because I haven't shown you a whole tableau, I can actually then play a bonus score marker next to it because I've achieved that one as well as a flower and then I can get some extra bonus points, which is really cool. This game includes a bit of a spatial puzzle, a timing puzzle, and it also includes a, you need to sort of have an idea of what other people are doing because you don't want them to block the area that you're going to go to. So if you're planning out what cards you want in order to place out your nice little tableau, be remember that if somebody's gone there already, you're not gonna be able to go there the next time. All right. These are all the beautiful components. Read the rule book, look at the video for the full instructions. These little cards are beautiful, they're seasonal. Like I said, I'll just give you another look because it is really the, um, the cards that are gonna draw you into this game. And that's Meadow. How gorgeous is that artwork? You want that on your shelf. You want to bring that to the table. It scales well. It's amazing. We've got it. All the links in the description. And until next time, if you can dream it, you can immerse yourself in it.